Good afternoon. My name is Karen Finlay Russell, and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Welcome to Back to Basics Coloring Tools. Most of the tools that I'll be sharing with you today can be found on page 129 of the current catalog. Almost everyone is familiar with tools such as our ink pads and of course our ink refills. However, what I want to show you today is some additional tools that we have that some of you may not be familiar with. So first, the stays on jet black ink pad. This ink pad is for use um, when you are using water coloring in your projects. Uh, this will not bleed when you're using water with it. Um, however, it's important to note when you are using stays on um, of any color, um, because it does come in different colors, um, when you're using it with any color, you need to ensure that uh, you, you have uh, stays on cleaner. Stays on cleaner will ensure that your stamps come out clean and um, will not uh, damage your stamps in any way. So it's important to note the two have to go together. Next is, uh, and most people will be familiar with this as well, is the Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. This is the ink that most of us use for our projects. Um, and uh, it's a common and important to have um, for any project that you're going to do. Next is Versamark, and this is something some of you may not be familiar with. Versamark is for tone-on-tone -tone stamping as well as for using for embossing. So if you're embossing an image, uh, you will stamp it in Versamark and then add um, whatever embossing powder that you want to to the image and then you set it with your heat gun. Um, there's numerous projects you can see online uh, with using Versamark and our embossing powder. So for further uh, details on that, look online. Um, next um, are our Stampin' Right markers. Stampin' Right markers come in almost every color uh, in the catalog and are a useful tool when um, coloring in images such as this one that is from our Color and Contour um, Stampin' Set. Um, so one of the things to mention about these markers is that uh, there's a thin line at one end, a thick line at the other end. What that means is the thin line is for writing or fine work, um, and the thick end is for coloring. When you're coloring uh, with the markers, uh, the color goes on very smoothly. You should be coloring with the side of your marker, not the tip of your marker. Um, however, the thing that I will mention about these markers is that it, it disperses all evenly. There is no ability to um, give you areas that are lighter and darker. So it, it goes on all in one color, as you can see in this uh, little flower that I'm doing here. Another good thing about the markers, and uh, one of the things I've used them for in the past, sorry, just looking for a, another color, is if you have a stamp like this one, and you want to make to do different letters in different colors, you can color directly on the stamp.
oops, wrong end. Won't work very well with the small end. And just by breathing on it and then stamping down, you get two different colors. This can be useful not only on letters, but on um, stamps that you have. Say, for, for example, this image where you have a stem and then you have the flowers at the top, you could color those in different colors. Um, so it's, it's an excellent technique. Keeping in mind, um, Stampin' Blends, you cannot use directly on stamps. You can only do that with your Stampin' Write markers. Stampin' Blends are another product um, that is available to color with. Uh, this is Stampin' Blend is uh, in light uh, Night of Navy. Same thing is the uh, thick mark shows that it's a thick tip. The thin mark shows it's a thin tip. You can color with either end. Keep in mind as well, you want to make sure that lid snaps on so they don't dry out. They are alcohol-based markers. So let's let, take a look at what they look like when you're coloring with them. And normally I wouldn't color flower blue, but for these for this purpose, I will go ahead. Just happens to be what I have out. I usually will start with the light color and then I'll I'll generally go with the exact same color just to go in in dark and uh, highlight. But um, right now I'll just use the dark Bermuda Bay and see what happens. So the thing about blends is you can actually blend the two colors together to come up with a slightly different color. As well, you can get different tones of that color by going back in a second time and making it darker in some spots. There is also, I don't know if I have mine out, I don't think I do, but there is also um, a blends um, color eraser. So you see where I went over the line here, you can use the color eraser and erase that, that color in that one area. As well, we have our water pencils. This is one in Cherry Cobbler. And the water pencils are great for uh, coloring in areas as well. And if you like that watercolor look, you can go in um, with some water. Uh, I think I have some in one of my water painters and just, sorry, gotta get some water down the barrel. And then you can spread that color. That's why they're called water pencils. So that you're actually doing almost a painting technique. Which brings me to my next product that I wanted to show you, and that's our water painters. The water painters come in three different sizes. This is the small. Then there's the medium. And the large, and they come in one set. Bring this back in because I'll show you one other tool that um, was one of the first things I bought when I started at or started using Stampin' Up products, and that is our 
blending pen. Looks like this. This one's um, actually blender pen. Uh, looks like this has a fine tip end um, and a thick, slightly thicker end. And you can blend. Oops, wrong side. Blend in your color of your pencil crayons. But the other good thing about the blending pen, I want to make sure I got it clean because I'm going to use a different color. Is you can actually pick up ink from your ink pad and move it onto an image. And you can do this in any of the colors. So it is a convenient tool to have. This one um, is probably close to 10 years old, if not 10 years old. Um, and so they tend to last a, a very long time. Just have a couple of other tools I want to share with you. First is the sponge dauber. This sponge dauber I've used Evening Evergreen with, and so I'm just going to quickly show you how that's used um, with some even, Evening Evergreen ink. You fit it on your fingertip. You just pick up a little bit of ink. And if, um, if the image I was coloring was here, I would want to start off my project here, wipe a little bit off, and then color here so that you don't get a big blot of ink in one spot. You just want to spread it out and you can go back in and make it lighter or darker depending on what, you, what you're coloring. A similar tool um, that has come out fairly recently is called our blending brush. And this one, um, this is the blending brush. If you look at it from the top, it looks like it's all one piece. But if you look at it this, at the side, you'll see that there's hundreds of bristles in this brush. Um, I've used it with fresh freesia. And uh, so let's, let's see what that looks like. So you're just going to pick up a little bit of ink um, from your stamp pad. You're going to start off where you want to color so you don't get uh, a lot in one area and then you just blend it in and if you want it darker than that that's very very light you pick up more color start off of where you want to color and then go back in and blend it again and that's the blending brush The last um, item that I wanted to show you, sorry, I've got so many things out now. I'm having a hard time finding the last one. Oh, there it is, is our Stampin' Spritzer. The Stampin' Spritzer is um, a bottle, has a bottle end, I'll just show you, that you can fill with either alcohol or water. Um, and any other any color of ink so you can use um, any of the refills and mix it with color and then you can spritz it actually maybe I'll just show you quickly I'll just have to take take some water out of this You will notice that um, with water painters, you're putting you're putting the brush on the opposite way you normally would, um, and and that's typical of most water painters. So 
I've just got the uh, real red out, so I'll just put a little drop of real red in. Depending on how dark you want it, you may put two drops in, or you may just put one. Put your lid on, and then shake it up. Gives you um, a little bit of red, and then you can spray it on your project to give you that watercolor look or if you do it, did it from a further distance you could get spots of the actual um, red color on your on your paper so that is um, all of the tools that I wanted to show you today Thank you for joining me. I hope that you uh, learned something about uh, Stampin' Up's tools and hopefully you'll join me again for another Back to Basics segment. Um, you, uh, you can find me um, at Karen's Inc. at stampinup.net. My phone number is there as well. I'm also on Facebook. Have a great day.